Oops. Hello, everybody. How are you? Great to see you guys. We're actually going to get started in about, whoops, it's 6.59 in one minute. So I'm going to move the laptop over to the other side of the room. The only thing we're going to need today is a block, and we're not going to need this till the end of the session. Maybe some people may need the block, and we're going to use this block to practice our crane and our crow pose. So that block is optional. <sighs> May we use this next minute to relax and unwind. Maybe we can find our bodies in a comfortable seated pose. I am sitting in a cow face. I invite you to sit in any seat that feels good for you. As we take nice natural breaths, maybe gazing downward towards the earth or closing our eyes. Simply using this time to relax and soothe and prepare our bodies for our session. Gazing down. Natural breaths. As we may find ourselves becoming more settled here in our present moment. Okay, it is 7.02 and we're going to officially get started. May we find ourselves in a comfortable pose. I am sitting in a cow face. You may find any seat that feels good for you. Our shoulders are back nice and tall, dropping down away from our ears. We wanna ensure that we are not tense. Our shoulders are nice and relaxed. Our tummies are nice and tight. Our spinal cord feels nice and long. Maybe we can gaze down or close our eyes if that feels good for us. As we take a nice, deep, intentional breath in, fill in our lungs with air. Exhale through the mouth. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Maybe we notice how the deep breath relaxes and soothes our mind and body even more. Maybe as we breathe our palms at heart center, seated prayer, natural breaths as we become centered here today. Tummies tight, shoulders are relaxed down away from the ears. Spinal cord is nice and long as we gaze down. Maybe we notice how the down gaze allows us to become more centered here today. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Noticing how that feels within our mind and body. Three more breaths. As we breathe our palms above our head and our seated salute, Noticing how this feels as we reach our fingers upwards towards the heavens. 
our spinal cord get nice and long, feeling that stretch there. Chin maybe come slightly up just a little to feel that stretch nice and deep. Nice deep breath in. Exhale, seated twist, right side, gazing over that right shoulder, noticing how our spinal cord relaxes and decompresses here. Natural breaths as we go deeper in the pose. Two more breaths. Exhale back to center, seated star, palms up in the air, off to the side. Exhale, seated twist, left side, gazing over that left shoulder. Noticing how our spinal cord relaxes even more. We're gonna hold this pose, two more breaths. Exhale back to center, seated star. Breathing up to seated salute. Exhale, seated prayer. Allowing our thumbs to touch our chest or our sternum. Shoulders are relaxed downward away from our ears. Our body is not sunken. We are nice and tall. Noticing how this feels. Gazing down, three more breaths. Two more breaths. Breathe in fully. Exhale. As we flow our feet into a butterfly or a diamond, our feet are bound together. Notice how this opens up our hips here. Want to ensure that our chest chakra, our heart chakra comes slightly up. Noticing how this feels as we do a couple of seated cat cow rotations to our natural breath. We are using the movements to relax and soothe our spinal cord. This movement also opens up our hips. We're going to do four more cat cow rotations to our natural breath. Two more breaths. As we, re as we relax here at center, bringing our legs together, finding our bodies in our staff pose. Our legs are side by side, parallel. Back is straight as we breathe our palms up in the air, seated salute. <sighs> Feeling that stretch. Exhale, down seated prayer. As we hinge our bodies at our hips, reaching our hands down into our seated forward fold, allowing our torso to come downward towards our thighs, feeling the stretch even deeper here. We're gonna hold this pose for three natural breaths. Two more breaths. As we exhale back up to our staff pose, relaxing the body. We're gonna bend our right knee, our right foot is flat on the earth. Relaxing our bodies here, noticing how this feels as we lift up our right foot and cross it over our left leg. We're gonna do a seated twist here taking our left arm, lifting it up in the air and bending our elbow and allowing our elbow to relax over that right knee as our right arm comes off to the back. Feeling that stretch here. If we wanna go deeper, we can slightly gaze over our right shoulder. Noticing how this relaxes our spinal cord even more. Three more breaths. As we exhale back to center, uncrossing that right leg, coming back into our staff, breathing our palms above our head and our salute. Exhale to prayer. Hinging at our hips, seated forward fold. 
two breaths. Exhale back up to staff. As we lift our left knee up in the air, left foot comes flat on the earth. We're gonna cross our left leg over our right. Taking our right arm now, our right elbow and crossing that over our left leg. Taking our left hand and bringing it behind our bodies, fingertips away from us. As we gaze over that left shoulder, feeling that spinal bend here. Maybe we notice how our spinal cord relaxes and soothes even more. We're gonna hang out here, three more breaths. Exhale back to center, uncrossing that leg, coming back into our staff, breathing our hands above our heads into our salute. Exhale to prayer as we handed our hips to forward fold, relaxing the body. Three more breaths. Exhaling back up to our staff pose. As we bend our right knee slightly up and we're gonna connect our right hand to our right foot, noticing how this feels. If this feels well, we're going to straighten out that right foot, feeling that stretch there. And maybe we can slightly bring our left leg, I'm sorry, our right foot off towards the side, feeling that stretch even more if we're able. And yes, we can bend at our knee as well. That feels good for us. We're doing what feels comfortable for our body. If this feels good and we choose, may we now reach down towards our left foot with our left hand, maybe slightly bending our legs, noticing how this feels. And we're gonna come into a bear pose or we also call this a boat pose variation. And we can, yes, we can keep our feet bent if that feels good, or we can straighten out our legs. Or we can bend one foot and straighten out one leg. Maybe give it a try, seeing how that feels within our body. And maybe we can rotate from side to side, noticing how this simple movement is opening up our hips even more or we can just hang out and keep both legs up. We're gonna hang out here and hold this pose for four more breaths, noticing how our bodies are balancing here. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to butterfly or diamond, bounding our feet together. Checking in with our bodies, ensuring that we didn't hurt or injure ourselves. And if all feels well, maybe we can rotate our bodies as we hinge at our hips and allow our chest to come downward towards the earth. What we are doing here, we are doing a couple of hip opener poses. I'm gonna hang out here for a couple more breaths, simply noticing how this feels in our body. as we breathe our bodies back up to our butterfly or our diamond, using our hands to bring our knees in together. As we find our bodies in our seated pose, I'm gonna come back to a cow face. Relaxing our bodies. And now we're gonna bring our attention to our computer screen. And I would just like to thank you all for joining me here today in our practice teacher training session. I just wanted to check in with you guys and see how everyone is doing. After Q&A, we'll get back to the yoga flow. For privacy, we don't show the students' faces and the questions that they ask. Now, some people might not need it, but um, if you wanted to grab a yoga block before we get started, um, you can. Okay, I see the yoga block, yay, okay. Because we're, we're gonna use the yoga block to practice our crow and our crane pose. And we're gonna talk about the difference between the two because a lot of people get those poses confused. And we're just gonna work on some tips to get our bodies prepared for that pose. But okay, great. Okay, so maybe find our bodies back into our seated pose. Any seated position that feels good for you. And now we're gonna flow our bodies here. But before we get going again, 
We're going to take this time to bring our bodies back down. Maybe bringing our palms at heart center. Ensuring that our abdominal muscles are nice and tight. Our shoulders are relaxed downward away from our ear. Gazing downward or closing our eyes. Noticing how the down gaze relaxes our mind and body. Allowing us to come once again back into our present moment. Maybe we can breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Noticing how that breath relaxes the body. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. As we breathe our palms above our heads and our seated salute, reaching our fingertips up towards the ceiling, towards the heavens, feeling that stretch. Exhale, seated prayer. Breathing back up to salute, feeling the rotations here. Exhale, back to prayer. Once again, salute, feeling the stretch here. Exhale, prayer hands, relaxing the bodies. Two breaths. As we breathe our bodies to our table, come into our hands and our knees. Noticing how this feels in our bodies. Maybe we can ensure that our abdominal muscles are nice and tight. Our knees are hip distance apart. Gazing forward as we drop our bodies down to our cow. Our chin comes slightly up. Gazing slightly up towards the heavens. Noticing how this feels in our body. It is a slight back bend. As we breathe down to our cat, our chin comes towards our clavicle. Our spinal cord goes up in the air. We're gonna do a couple of cat cow rotations to our natural breath. Noticing how this feels in our bodies. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. As we pause that table, noticing how we feel, finding our bodies at neutral, checking in to see how we feel. If all feels well, we're going to breathe our right foot towards the back. We're gonna come into a bird pose here. Our feet is off to the back. Now, if at any time, if ourselves, or if we have a client who loses their balance here, we can always give them the option to lower their toes downward towards the earth. Noticing the difference between the two, one leg is up, one leg is down. Both of these poses are a bird pose. If all feels well, we can bring our left arm forward. Now we are in our complete bird pose here. Gazing our eyes forward, we wanna ensure that we have proper body alignment here. Tummies are tight. Noticing how this is a balance in pose and we may feel <clears throat> our right arm working here. Two more breaths. As we breathe in deeply, and we're gonna exhale, bringing our knee to our elbow, feeling that tummy crunch, holding a pose. Exhale back to bird. Yes, knee to elbow, holding that crunch. Back to bird. One more time, knee to elbow, holding it in. Noticing how this feels. Two more breaths. Exhale back to bird, gazing forward. We're gonna hang out here for a couple more breaths. Noticing how this feel. If all feels well, we're gonna do a couple of pulses here. Lifting our right leg up in the air if we're able. When, we're, when we do our pulses, we are working our gluteus maximus, working on our buns of steel here. Noticing how this feels. 
at any time, if we are unable or our clients, we can give them the option to once again, lower their feet or their foot downward towards the earth and their arm. Hanging out here, two more breaths. Finding our pause, exhaling back to the table, dropping down to our cow, back and sunken, chin is slightly up. Exhale into our cat, chin comes towards our clavicle, spinal cord comes up in the air. Exhale back to our table. As we flow to bird pose opposite side, bringing our left leg out to the back. Keeping in mind that we can always lower our toes downward towards the earth if we need to. Holding a pose, two more breaths as we gain our balance here. Noticing how our bodies feel if our, if our elbows are sunken or if they are straight. Whatever pose feels good for you, we're, gonna, we're going to listen to our bodies as we breathe our right arm forward, engaging our abdominal muscles. Four more breaths here, feeling our bodies balanced. Two more breaths, building strength. As we exhale, our knee to our elbow, holding it in, feeling that crunch. Back to bird, knee to elbow, back to bird. One more time, knee to elbow, holding it in, three breaths. Feeling that tummy crunch here. Exhale, back to bird. If our body's still able and we, and we want to continue to flow, we can do a couple of pulses here by lifting our left leg up in the air, feeling that pulse. This works our buns of still, lifting our gluteus maximus. Three more breaths. As we find our pause, exhale back to our table. As we drop down to our cow, exhale to cat. Coming back to our table. As we take a couple seconds to relax our bodies, we're gonna come into a thread the needle, starting on the right side, bringing that right arm out to the side. You can lift it up in the air if you choose, whatever feels good for you. As we thread our right arm through our left, our heart chakra, our chest comes downward towards the earth. We turn our head towards our arm that's threaded through our arm. <sighs> Noticing how our bodies relax here. And if we want to go deeper in this pose, we can take our left hand and wrap that left arm around our backs. Noticing how that feels. Maybe we can gaze our eyes down or close our eyes. Getting lost in this pose here. Using this pose to help us feel centered and relaxed here today. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. Two more breaths. As we slowly unwrap our arm, if it was wrapped, unthreading that needle, coming back into our table. As we drop down to our cow, exhale into our cat, flowing back the table. As we reach the opposite arm out to the side, threading that arm through our right arm now, body, chest comes downward towards the earth. Our head, the side of our head relaxes down. Maybe we can close our eyes or gaze downward, noticing how the pose feels. And if we wanna go deeper, yes, we can take that right arm now and wrap that right arm around our backs if we choose. Taking nice natural breaths here. Relaxing our shoulders forward. Allowing our bodies to completely relax in our pose.
We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. Two more breaths. As we slowly unwrap that arm, unthreading our needle. As we come back to our table, dropping down to our cow, exhaling to our cat, flowing back to our table. As we push our bodies up to our first down dog, maybe we are gazing back at our feet. Maybe we can push our torso towards our thighs. Noticing how we feel that stretch even more. Hanging out here for a couple breaths. Maybe we can pedal our feet walking our dog by moving our feet from side to side. We call this walking our dog or pedaling our feet. Ensuring that our abdominal muscles are nice and tight. We always wanna keep control and have control of our abdominal muscles. This allows us to keep control of our abdominal muscles in real life when we're actually out and about. Noticing the difference between sucking in and controlling the abdominals. We're gonna hang out here. Three more breaths, still just strengthen our arms. As we breathe to our up dog, bodies come up, our thighs are off the earth. Yes, noticing the difference between an up dog and a cobra. When we are in a cobra, our thighs are relaxed on the earth. When we're in an up dog, our thighs are off, are off the earth. As we flow back to our down dog, gazing back at our feet. As we come on down to our dolphin, on our forearms. If we ever have a client who has issues being in a down dog for a long period of time, we can always give them the option to come down into a dolphin. When they're in a dolphin pose, it seems like they're still doing the same poses as the rest of the class, so they don't feel left out. So either we can come inside of our dolphin or we can be in our down dog. These are nice options to give clients or give ourselves when we're practicing yoga. We're gonna hang out here for three more breaths. If we're in our down dog, maybe come down to our dolphin. We are on our forearms, gazing back at our feet. As we walk our feet closer towards our torso, noticing how we feel in our bodies. As we walk our feet closer to our torso, we'll notice our buttocks comes higher up in the air and you'll feel it in your torso. I'm sorry, you'll feel it in your lower arms even more. This pose here is also a headstand prep pose. As we drop to our knees, coming into a wide-legged child's pose, relaxing the body. Hanging out in our child's pose. Three more breaths, simply noticing how this feels in our body. As we push our bodies up, we're gonna come into a puppy pose. Noticing the difference between a, a child's pose and a puppy pose. In a puppy pose, our legs are more together and our buttocks is higher in the air and our chest is downward towards the earth as we slightly gaze forward. So we may have a client who doesn't like child's pose or do not like puppy pose. So it's, it's nice to just know options that we can give ourselves or our clients. So this is the puppy pose or this is the child's pose where our legs are wider apart and our buttocks is lower towards the earth. See the difference there? So it's nice to know the difference between the two. We're gonna hang out here for a couple breaths, either in child's pose or puppy pose. Noticing how it feels in your body. Gazing our eyes down or closing our eyes. Two more breaths. Hmm. 
as we wave our bodies to a table, but we're gonna do a couple of spinal waves here. We are gonna relax our spinal cord, moving our hips, using our hands to bring our hips and torso forward, and then pushing our bodies back towards our feet. Noticing how this spinal wave relaxes and soothes the spinal cord. Maybe we can keep our abdominal muscles nice and tight as we are moving. Three more breaths. As we find our pulse, and we're gonna relax here on our forearms, and we're gonna come down to our Sphinx pose. Our Sphinx pose is when we're, we're on our tummies, we're on our thighs, and we are relaxing on our forearms. Noticing how this feels. We wanna ensure that we are not sunken down, always wanna have control of our body. So noticing the difference of how our bodies feel when we sunk, when we sink down and when we are up. This Spanx pose is a slight back bend. So it's nice to know the difference here between the Spanx pose and also the Cobra, which is very similar to the Spanx pose. Hanging out here for two more breaths, simply getting used to this pose and seeing how this feels in the body. As we relax our hands, we're gonna place our palms right in front of our bodies, right in front of our bodies, and we're gonna push our bodies up. This is a this is another um, back bend. Now this here, this is this is a seal pose. Noticing the difference between a sphinx and a seal. Noticing how in our seal, our bodies come up even higher. This seal pose is actually preparing our bodies for our crane pose that we're gonna get into later. So what we're doing now is we're doing our prep poses before we get to our peak pose. We're gonna hang out here in this seal pose, noticing how when we lift our bodies up, we can actually feel our, our muscles working in our lower arms. And yes, I see someone doing a couple of seal pose pulses, seal pose pulses, yes. You can do that too if that feels good. That is how you build even more strength in your arms. We're gonna hang out here two more breaths. At any time, if you want to relax, you can come on back down to that Spanx pose. <sighs> Maybe we can take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Noticing how that just relaxed our bodies as we push our bodies up one more time to our seal pose. Hanging out here in our seal. As we Bring our hands closer towards our chest and come up in our cobra. Noticing the difference between the seal and the cobra, yes. And you guys may, may notice all these poses look very similar. So it's nice to know the difference so we can explain them to our clients once we have them. And notice them once again, the cobra and the up dog. Noticing how they feel very similar as well. And this cobra and these up dogs are preparing our bodies for our crane and crow pose we're gonna get into later. Hanging out here, cobra to up dog. Now we're gonna flow to our down dog. Gazing back at our feet. Allowing our torso to push towards our thighs, feeling that stretch. As we pedal our feet and walk our dog, noticing how we are building strength in our arms. We are working our upper bodies here today. As we flow to our high plank, noticing how the high plank and the down dog looks very similar. So yes, we're gonna flow into our high plank. We're gonna hang out here for breaths, building strength in our arms. At any time, we can come on down to our low plank, if that feels good for you. Whatever you choose in your body, two more breaths. As we come to our chaturanga, Working our bodies, exhaling to our cobra. <sighs> Coming to our up dog. Exhale, down dog. Gazing back as we pedal our feet. Coming up again to our high plank. Holding a high plank, ensuring our abdominal muscles are nice and tight. We can come to a low plank if that feels good for us. As we exhale to Chaturanga, breathing to our Cobra. <sighs> exhale to Sphinx. We're gonna relax our bodies here, giving our arms a little rest. 
maybe we can close our eyes or gaze our eyes downward. Maybe we can take a nice deep breath in. Exhale fully. Noticing how the breath helps regulate and relax our heart. Even though we did slight movements, you guys probably already feel your heart pumping. Our bodies are starting to get nice and warm. We're gonna hang out here for a couple breaths, just relaxing our bodies. Maybe we can come into a sleeping pose, bringing both arms in front of us and relaxing our face down on our hands. Allowing our shoulders to relax forward. Eyes are closed, completely relaxing our bodies. Allowing our arm muscles to relax and soothe. We're gonna hang out here, five natural breaths. Three more breaths, completely relaxing our bodies, allowing our bodies to fall forward. as we slowly awaken our bodies. And we're gonna lift our bodies slightly up and we're gonna bring our hands forward, coming into our Superman or Supergirl. We are working our tummy. This is a slight back bend here. So our legs are up off the earth. Our arms are up off the earth. Like we are flying, Superman, Supergirl. Hanging out here, two more breaths. As we swell my arms to the back, coming into our locust pose. Our palms are facing up towards the ceiling, yes. Our legs are off, off the earth. Chin slightly up, we are in our locust pose. This is a slight back bend. If we wanna go deeper, we can allow our right hand to touch our right foot, our right ankle. We are working on our bow pose. This is a half bow. If we wanna go into a full bow, we can take our left hand and connect it to our left ankle. Noticing how our chest comes off the earth even more. Our backs are bent even more. At any time, you can come down and relax in this pose and relax your body. If you feel any tension in this pose, relax down. Two more breaths for those who are still holding the pose. Relaxing the feet, letting go the feet, swimming our arms forward, coming back into that sleeping rest pose here. Relaxing the body, natural breaths, shoulders fall forward, bodies coming completely relaxed. We're gonna hang out here four more breaths, resting our bodies. Two more breaths. As we come up to our Spanx pose, we are relaxing on our forearms. <sighs> Ensuring that we are not sunken. Our shoulders are away from our ears. Two more breaths. Bringing our hands forward, pushing our bodies up to our seal. Two more breaths. Bringing our hands closer to our body, coming up to our cobra. Relaxing our shoulders down away from our ears as we breathe to our up dog. Exhale, down dog. Breathing back to up dog. Exhale, down dog. We're gonna do a couple of up dog, down dog rotations. Up dog, working our arms. Exhale, back to down dog. 
as we bring our right leg in the air, we are going to our three-legged dog, working our arms even more, gazing back at our foot. Maybe we can bend our right foot towards our left buttocks, opening up that hip a little more. And if we choose, we can flow and fall over into a wild thing. If we choose, feeling that stretch, working our left form, as well as stretching our bodies. Two more breaths. Feeling that stretch. Exhale back to down dog. Gazing back at our feet. Maybe we can pedal our feet and walk our dog. Pushing our torso towards our legs and our down dog, feeling that stretch even more. Hanging out in our down dog as we flow into our three-legged dog, opposite side. Left leg goes in the air. Gazing back at that right foot. As we bend our left knee towards our right buttocks, opening up that hip even more. And if we choose, we can fall into a wild thing, feeling that stretch as we work our arm strength on our right arm. <sighs> feeling that nice deep stretch. And at the same time, building strength in that right arm. <sighs> Two more breaths. <sighs> as we exhale back down dog, Coming down to our dolphin, coming on our forearms, relaxing the body. Walking our feet towards our torso, noticing how our buttocks comes higher in the air, gazing back at our feet. We're gonna hang out here, three breaths. Drop into our knees, coming into a wide-legged child's pose. Relaxing the body. Eyes are gazed downward or close, whatever feels good for you. Noticing how this pose helps regulate the heartbeat. You can hang out here for five more natural breaths. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. As we slightly gaze forward in our child's pose, reaching our arms or walking our fingers forward, noticing how we feel that stretch even more. <sighs> Maybe we can rock our bodies from side to side, opening up our hips, noticing how this feels. Or we can just stay still and relax our bodies, whatever feels good for us. Two more breaths. as we do a couple of spinal waves, waving our bodies to our tabletop. We're gonna do spinal waves first. Relaxing the spinal cord here. You may even feel your spinal cord start to crack in the spinal wave. As we find our pause in our table, pushing our bodies up to our down dog, gazing back at our feet. As we come into a complete forward fold, we can jump or walk in our complete forward fold. Hanging out here, allowing our torso to relax over our legs. If we wanna go deeper, we can come into a rag doll by hugging our elbows with both hands. Taking natural breaths, noticing how this pose relaxes and soothes. As we exhale to half forward fold, 
<sighs> Breathing back to complete forward fold. Exhale back to half forward fold. As we flow into our Tadasana, the palms are at our side. We are in our mountain pose. Notice how this feels. As we breathe our palms up to our standing salute. Exhale, standing prayer. Breathe back up, standing salute. Or extended mountain, whatever you choose. As we lean our bodies towards the right, standing crescent moon. Engaging our abdominal muscles, still in this side bend here. Exhale back to center. Standing crescent moon, left side, lean in the body to the opposite side, feeling that side bend. As we exhale back to center, standing salute or standing extended mountain. Breathing to standing prayer. As we bend our knees, coming into our chair pose. Now we are working our thighs, our quads, working our legs, noticing how this feels. We can be in prayer hands in our chair or we can extend our arms up in the air, whatever feels good for you. We're gonna hang out in this chair pose for natural breaths. At any time, if your legs start to hurt your knees, may you flow into a forward fold. Two more breaths. Chair twist, right side. Twisting the body towards the right if you're able. You can stay in chair pose if you choose. Exhale back to center. Chair twist, left side. Exhale back to center. As we flow to a complete forward fold. <sighs> Relaxing our bodies, noticing how this complete forward fold is a counter stretch to the chair pose. It relaxes and soothes our legs and our knees. We're gonna hang out here for breaths. Maybe we can slightly bend our knees, bringing our chest towards our knees, simply seeing and noticing how this feels in our body. If this pose feels good, that means that we can practice our crow and our crane pose. And what we're gonna do next, if you choose, is we're going to grab our blocks and, and prepare our bodies to play with our crane or our crow pose. Maybe you can take a sip of water if you choose to take a sip. If you need a sip of water, I'm placing my block behind me, slightly behind my foot. <sighs> And I'm gonna just relax in the half forward fold for a couple breaths. Slowing down to a complete forward fold, feeling that stretch behind my legs. Coming back to a half forward fold, bending my knees. And we're just gonna play around for a little bit in our crane pose. We wanna ensure that when we're in our crane or our crow, our hands should always be flat on the earth. Maybe our fingertips slightly apart when they're on the earth because we want to have that nice solid foundation there. Now, noticing the difference because a lot of people you guys probably have seen gets confused with the crane and the crow pose because they look very similar. They are both downward poses. When we're in our crane, you may notice that the knees are more to the back of the arms. This is more of a crane pose. When we're in a crow pose, you may notice that the knees are more off to the sides of the elbows, kind of like a flap. So, that, so before we get started, we're gonna start with a couple of crow preps. So we are, we are slightly down, see that there? Ensuring that we feel good in our body. And we can just slightly lift one leg off the earth, placing it back down. This is a nice prep pose. Taking the other foot off the earth, and placing it back down. Other foot off the earth, 
and maybe slightly leaning a little bit forward. See that there? So we are basically, we are in our half pro right now. Noticing how this feels in our body as we relax our foot, doing the opposite, taking that opposite foot off the earth. Maybe leaning slightly forward, feeling that pose even more and relaxing back. So those are a nice couple of prep poses that we can do without even using the block. And if we want to try to see how our body's still up higher in the air, we can step on our block and play with our crane. If that feels good for you. Building a strength in the arms. If you want to play with your crow, same position on the block, but our knees are to the side of our elbows, not on top of our elbows. Hands are flat on the earth. And now we are in our crow. See that there? On the blocks. But we are still in a position, preparing our mind and our body for the pose. And if you want to do the, the prep, the, the um, tapping, we can always do the prep tapping. Noticing how that works the body even more. Now, before we go into the pose without the blocks, placing the block off to the side, maybe we can come into a wide-legged child's pose just for a second to relax the mind and body. And give our bodies time to relax and soothe. Maybe taking in a nice deep breath. Exhale. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Gazing our eyes down or closing our eyes. natural breaths. We're going to use this time to relax and soothe, regulating our heart temperature. I'm sorry, regulating our heart and trying to bring our body temperature back down before we go into our crow or our grave. Yeah. Four more breaths in our child's voice. Relaxing and soothing finding our bodies coming even more centered. As we spinal wave our bodies back to our table, doing a couple of spinal waves, noticing how this relaxes and soothes. Our bodies back at our table, pushing our bodies back down to our down dog, gazing back at our feet, as we come to a complete forward fold, hovering over our legs, maybe coming into a rag doll. Exhale the half forward fold. And if our feet are together, maybe we can yogi walk our feet slightly apart, slightly bending at our knees, placing both of our palms flat on the earth that feels comfortable for us. We gotta make sure that we feel comfortable on the earth before we go into this pose. Now, when I first learned this pose, I would always have pillows in front of me because how many people practice crane pose and fall flat on their face? Yes, I'm happy I remembered that. So if you wanna grab a pillow or something in front of you, please, please, please do so because in practicing crane, like practicing headstands, sometimes we fall over. And these big giant pillows makes the fall fun without hurting our bodies. So grabbing and moving anything out of the way that can hurt you. So once again, we used in our forward fold, we came down, we, we were bending at our knees and we were placing both of our hands flat on the earth to see how we feel. And once again, we can always tap our feet if we don't want to go into that full crane or pro. But if we choose to, may we use the next couple of breaths to play around in our crow or our crane.
Noticing how this feels. <sighs> Coming out whenever you need to. Or just doing the preps, the tapping. But always keeping the pillow in front of you and maybe giving it a try if, if you choose slightly leaning forward and lifting your feet off the floor together. Yes. And then coming back down. But sometimes, and doing the crow, sometimes we fall forward. That's why it's good to have the pillows in front of us. So we're gonna do it for a couple more breaths, either coming into that crow or that crane. And again, we can always just do the taps. When we do the taps, we are actually building strength in our arms to one day be able to get into that crow. Yeah, so whatever feels good for you, whenever you're ready, we could come out of that pose, coming into our yogi squat, placing our palms on the earth, heart chakra chin comes slightly up, relaxing our shoulders downward away from our ears. And if we choose, we can even bring our palms at heart center as we relax in our yogi squats. And if we want to go deeper, we can close our eyes if we can keep our balance. Some people fall over when they close their eyes in yogi squat or in a lot of poses. We are using this pose to relax and center our minds and bodies. Two more breaths. And if you want to go back into your crow or crane one more time before we move on, we can, only if you choose. If not, may you hang out in your yogi squat or come into a seated position. But for anyone who want to play around in that crow or crane one more time, even if it's just doing knee taps, may you feel free to do so. We're going to hang out here for a couple more breaths. And again, we can do the taps if that feels good for us, or we can come into that pose. Couple more breaths. Coming out whenever you need to. Oh yes, I see you over there, okay. Doing the taps, mm-hmm. Looking good. Gonna hang out here for a couple more breaths. I see people still practicing. Looking good too, yeah. Oh yes, there you go. Yeah, you did it, I saw. Both, foot, both of your feet came off the ground, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> see? And um, having these pillows here, because sometimes when we take our feet off the ground for the first time, sometimes we fall forward. I see the pillows, yes. So always having those pillows there, it's a beautiful thing because we don't want to fall down and chip a chip a tooth or anything. But again, these, these, these taps help us prep our bodies for bringing both feet off the floor. So just those taps and then one day you come from taps to feet off the floor, to feet off the earth. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I know your arms are probably tired, so let's find our bodies in a seated position just for a second, maybe in a butterfly or a diamond. Sometimes we may have a client who has tight hips and they can't get into the butterfly right away. So we can give them the option to come into a diamond, which is bringing their feet slightly away. And to help us open up our hips even more, we simply just lean forward as much as we comfortably can. Noticing how we lean forward, it allows our hips to open even more over time. And it allows our bodies to come deeper in that pose over time. So this is a nice hip opener stretch pose for ourselves. And we're gonna find that when we start teaching yoga, a lot of people are gonna say that they are tight in the hips as we may be tight in our hips. So this is the butterfly in the diamond is a nice pose. It also relaxes and soothes and center. Noticing how both of our feet are together. We are bounding our feet together as we know our feet carries us everywhere we go. So when we bound our feet together, it helps soothe and relax and center the mind, body, and soul. So may we hang out here for a couple breaths, gazing our eyes down or closing them, whatever feels good for you. We're gonna do a bonus of two more breaths here, relaxing the body.
as we slightly exhale up. Maybe come into a table position. Pushing our bodies up to our down dog. Gazing back at our feet. Maybe we can widen our legs, coming into a wide-legged forward fold now. So we went from a down dog to a wide-legged forward fold. Both of our, our legs are spread apart. And maybe we can take both of our hands and reach down to the lower parts of our legs. And we're gonna work on more hip openness here by rocking our body from side to side, noticing how that feels as we rock our bodies, yes. And you can touch the earth. You can um, put your hands, you can bound your hands behind your back and allow them to come up above your head. Whatever you choose to do, we're just gonna do a couple more um, hip openers here. Playing in a pose for a couple breaths, doing what your body tells you to do here. Four more breaths, playing in a pose. Two more breaths. As we breathe our bodies slightly up to a um, half forward fold, wide legged forward fold. As we hinge our body swinging forward towards our right leg, now we're in a pyramid. Noticing how this stretches behind our legs as we allow our torso to relax over that front leg. This is our pyramid pose. Maybe we can close our eyes and breathe nice and slow, noticing how with each breath, our torso comes closer towards that leg. That leg is not bent in front of us. Well, we can bend it if we choose, but now we're in a runner's lunge. When we straighten it, we are in a pyramid. But if you guys want to flow into a runner's lunge, yes, we, we can. We can bend this front leg and we can come into a runner's lunge. Noticing how this feels in our body. And we can walk our right leg to the edge of the mat and bring that right arm inside of our leg. Now we're flowing into more of a lizard pose. See how every pose is connected? It's all connected. And if we want to go deeper in that lizard, we can drop our knee if we choose or we can keep our knee up and we can come on down to our forearms. If this is too much of a big stretch, we can always drop that knee. Or you can bring your block back in front of you and come onto your forearms here and keep that leg up in the air. So these are nice options when we're flowing in our lizard. Just so you know, a lizard is a um, split prep pose. We're gonna hang out here for three more breaths doing any lizard that feels good for you. Two more breaths. As we come on out of there, coming back to our runner's lunge, flowing back to our pyramid, straightening out that front leg. And pyramid is also a split pose prep as well. We lean our torso closer to our, towards our legs and notice how we can feel that hip stretching even more preparing our body for splits. As we breathe our bodies back to the center, we are back in our wide-legged forward fold. Rocking our bodies from side to side, noticing how that relaxes and soothes our right leg from being in that pyramid and from being in that lizard. So rocking our bodies from side to side, or we can reach our hands above our heads, behind our backs, and whatever feels good for you, we're gonna hang out here, three more breaths. As we prep for pyramid on the opposite side, twisting our bodies towards our left leg, coming into pyramid on the opposite side, left leg forward. Now we're gonna stretch the opposite side of our body, leaning our torso towards that leg, taking nice deep breaths here. Maybe gazing our eyes down, noticing how the more we relax our bodies, the deeper we can get into poses. As we exhale to that runner's lunge, bending that front knee, now we're in our runner's lunge. We went from a pyramid to a runner's lunge. And if we wanna go deeper in this pose, we can walk our left foot to the edge of the mat, bringing our left hand inside of our leg. Now we're preparing our body for a lizard and we can drop to that knee if we choose and come down to our forearms. But if this, if this stretch is too much, we can always, once again, grab that yoga block, 
or a pillow or blankets and come up on the blocks and take that knee off the earth. Whatever feels good for you. We're gonna hang out here in our lizard for a couple, four more breaths. Ensuring our abdominal muscles are nice and tight. Coming out of that pose, coming back into our runner's lunge. Flowing back to our pyramid, straightening out their front leg, relaxing our torso over the body. As we bring our bodies back to center, wide legged forward fold. Relaxing our bodies completely down to the earth. As we walk our hands forward, Coming back to our down dog. Exhale to up dog. Dropping down to cobra. Relaxing down to our Spanx pose. We are back on our forearms and our Spanx. <sighs> Eyes are closed. Take a nice deep intentional breath if you choose. Exhale through the mouth. As we flow onto our backs, coming into a Shavasana. Just for a second, but we're not gonna rest in Shavasana just yet. We're gonna bring our knees to our chest. Knees to chest, hugging them in. Allowing our shoulders to relax back into the yoga mat. <sighs> nice deep breath. Exhale. As we allow our knees to fall towards the left, we're gonna come into a recline, spinal twist here. Knees fall to the left, shoulder blades relax back into the mat. Right arm comes off towards the side. As we gaze over that right arm or gaze up at the ceiling, the heavens, whatever feels good for you. We can straighten out our legs to the side if we choose to go deeper in that stretch. Maybe we can close our eyes. Four more breaths. As we exhale back to center, knees to chest, hugging the knees in. Now when our knees to fall towards the right, Left leg goes, I'm sorry, left arm goes off to the side. We can gaze over that left arm or look up in the air. We can straighten out one of our legs to the side or even both of them, whatever you feel, feeling that stretch even more. Gazing our eyes down. Relaxing our bodies into the yoga mat. Gonna hang out here for more breaths. As we exhale back to center, bringing our knees into our chest, hugging them in just for a second. As we breathe our legs up in the air, legs on the wall poles, or in our case, invisible wall reaching down to the bottom parts of our legs and bringing our legs towards our torso, feeling that stretch. Legs back up on the wall pose, bringing our knees back into our chest, allowing our feet to be flat on the floor, knees are up in the air. Using our hands and our feet to push our buttocks off the earth. We are now working our gluteus maximus, our buns are still. We have a couple minutes to go. We can do a couple of pulses if we choose by lifting our bottom down and coming back up. Noticing how this pose really tightens the gluteus maximus. This is this pose helps round the, the buttocks. It helps lift the buttocks. So we can do this at any time when we're home, playing around with this bridge pose here, especially when we do the pulses. I think we all like to have a nice round buttocks 
lift our buttocks as much as we can. Buns of still, a couple more breaths. Feeling a burn here. Noticing the deeper you come up, you'll feel the burn. And then if we wanna go even more deeper in this bridge, we can take our hands and bring them underneath our bottoms, interlacing our fingers together and walking our shoulder blades closer towards our spinal cord. Noticing how our chest comes higher up in the earth, in the air, I'm sorry. And our hips comes higher up in the air. Our buttocks gets even more tighter. We're gonna hang out here five more breaths, buns of still here. And we can do pulses if we choose. Three more breaths. As we exhale down, relaxing the body, bringing our knees into our chest, hugging them in, noticing how this relaxes our gluteus maximus muscles. <sighs> Crossing our feet at our ankles as we do a tummy crunch, coming into a seated position. We're gonna work our abdominal muscles. We just worked our gluteus maximus, so we gotta work those abdominal muscles here. We're gonna work on a bolt pose. So we can have our feet crossed at our ankles or we can bring them straight or we can bring them straight up in the air. Whatever type of bolt pose that feels good for you. We're gonna hang out here seven natural breaths doing any bolt pose that we choose. Noticing how our bodies are balancing. We're also working our abdominal muscles here. Four more breaths. Two more breaths. Feeling a burn. We're gonna hang here for a couple more seconds, bringing our hands in and banging our hands from each side of our hips. We are working our oblique muscles here. Noticing how we can feel the tummy burn even more. This pose helps make our waist a little bit more smaller. We're gonna do this for a couple more breaths. We can go as slow or as fast as we choose. Bonus points, four more breaths. Body's getting nice and warm. Two more breaths. Feeling a burn. Finding pause, coming down, touching my toes, our feet and our hands. Feeling that stretch, bringing our left foot out towards the side, if we can. Bringing our right foot out towards the side. We are in a both pose variation. Noticing how this stretches, we can always bend our knees. Whatever feels good for us. Three more breaths. Relaxing the body here in this pose. Bringing our feet together, bounding our feet together. Relaxing our bodies, we are back in our Diamond or butterfly, chest comes up in our cow. We are in the seated cat cow. Exhale into our cat. Breathing back up to our cow. Exhale into our cat. Taking our knees, bringing them together as we float to our backs, bringing our knees into our chest. Hugging them in. Allowing our right leg to straighten out in front of us. Allowing our left leg to straighten out in front of us. Our legs are parallel side by side. The heels of our feet are connecting. As we allow our feet to fall off to the side like a V, completely relaxing our legs. Our backs are relaxed into the yoga mat. Our eyes are closed. As we take nice deep breaths, exhale. Noticing how that breath just relaxed our bodies even more. May we keep our eyes closed or gaze our eyes down. Bodies feel like they are melting back into the mat. As 
as we find our minds and our bodies becoming relaxed. We are settling in as we are concluding our practice here today. We're going to relax and unwind in this pose in silent meditation for 12 natural breaths. Five more breaths. Two more breaths. As we slowly roll onto our side, coming into a fetal pose. Maybe we can keep our eyes gazed downward or closed if that feels good for us. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. As we slowly wiggle our toes and rotate our ankles, maybe we can move our bodies at our hips, allowing the movements to slowly awaken our bodies. And if we choose, and only if we choose, we can slowly open our eyes as we prepare to come to a seated pose. However, if we choose to stay in a fetal pose or in a Shavasana, we may stay in those poses and continue to relax. For those who wish to come out of the pose, I invite you to take your hand and push your body up out of that position and come into a seated pose of choice. I'm going to come into a cow face. <sighs> Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. As we breathe our palms at heart center. Gazing down, we're closing our eyes. As we thank ourselves for allowing ourselves to practice self-care here today. For in a busy, busy world, it is a beautiful thing when we find time for self. For self-care is a necessity. As we know, we cannot pour from an empty cup. We must take care of self and find time for self as we are doing here today. If you 
want to do for others. The light in me sees, appreciates, and respects the light in you. And I thank you so much for allowing me to guide you here today. For it truly was a pleasure. Peace and blessings be to you all. Namaste.